incredible animation sequence really kind of sums up where way forward are with the Shantae series. Hello and welcome to this video. It's Shantae and the seven sirens we're taking a look at today on Nintendo Switch. And this will give you a real idea of the next major installment of this franchise. This is actually the fifth Shantae game. I know some people have probably never even heard of this franchise, which still kind of blows my mind a little bit. Uh, it's actually sold over about two million copies worldwide. But I think that's the interesting point about the Shantae series that it feels like it's a series that's really about to break out. Uh, as I say, the, and what I've really found really telling about Shantae and the Seven Sirens is that this really speaks to the ambition of the Way Forward team. And obviously, as I mentioned, the animated sequence at the beginning of this really sort of illustrates the desire to create an animated TV show. Uh, you've got a bunch of new characters in this episode, which is also a really big step forward. It kind of explains more about the kind of the half genie heritage of Shantae and what the half genies, the impact they have on the major world. Um, and this actually released on Apple Arcade, would you believe, back in October, uh, the first part of it actually. So it was really interesting life cycle for this game. Uh, the first part actually appeared on Apple Arcade. Uh, and, and then uh, basically the second part released in March. So, uh, but the team actually said they didn't even plan to actually have exclusivity on Apple Arcade, but actually this game has had over uh, sort of eight months of it, uh, which is quite incredible. But I think personally having played it on Apple Arcade when it came out and playing it now on Switch, I really do feel like this game benefits and really has found its true home on, uh, on on consoles. And I feel like, you know, when you're playing it in handheld, it just responds so much more fluidly uh, it just the action just seems more dynamic uh, it, and you know compared to when you've got it docked on the big screen obviously it's amazing seeing the really luscious visuals and you know, the bright colors pop on the screen on, on the on your big TV but I think when it comes to handheld screen this game really thrives at its best and handheld on the switch is the perfect size the perfect way to play the Shantae games it, it just works really really well um, but yeah I mean as I mentioned this is the fifth Shantae game you know this franchise has been around for nearly 20 years now which is quite incredible uh, Way Forward themselves have been, you know, they're actually celebrating the 30th year anniversary this year in 2020. Um, I feel like this just, this game is, uh, what I've really always liked about the Shanty games is, you know, they've got a nice tongue in cheek humor, they've got a decent amount of puzzle solving in there, but they're already, they really kind of focus on mixing things up a little bit here. You can see Shanty is kind of briefly dancing on the screen there, so you kind of get a feel for those mechanics, but basically, Shanty, you know, can have different. Um, so she can, not only does she have different forms throughout the game, but when she's dancing, she actually can affect the world in different ways as well. So she can actually create platforms out of thin air. Uh, she can actually affect machinery, so she can kind of like manipulate the environment a little bit to, you know, operate things in, in her favor. Uh, she can actually help change uh, enemies on the screen. She can help think vines grow. So there's all kinds of different abilities that Shantae has that can kind of really affect what just seems like a simple side-scrolling Metroidvania. Uh, but actually there's a lot of substance to it and when I'm talking about the, the the styles of world you can play basically Shantae can turn into a newt which she can climb the walls which would be very useful in this certain situation right here um, but she can also actually turn into a frog and kind of like uh, swim under the water and she can even turn into uh, like she basically and then she can also turn into what I guess you could term as Mrs. Driller uh, so basically you reach some sort of sandy like terrain and she can dig down deeper and deeper and deeper and she can actually reach the bottom and the surface to uh, you know get to, to get to her next objective um, but the core attacking mechanic Shantae has is her hair uh, which I really I, I still to this day reminds me of a game called Kabuki Quantum Fighter on the NES from years ago when it was one of those original games that always stuck with me when you used the character used the hair to attack uh, and I've always whenever I've seen the Shanty games whenever I've played the Shanty games I've always that that game just keeps popping back up in my memory it's so weird it's a very specific thing but yeah Shantae's hair is kind of her main attack mechanism uh, she can actually increase the damage it deals she can increase the um, you know the speed at which she attacks with her hair by get, buying upgrades using the uh, gemstones which you're acquiring from attacking and killing these creatures. Um, and it, it just, uh, but there are other things as well. She can acquire fireball, so she can fire a, a distortion of fireballs out to her enemies. There's a boomerang. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways to to operate and manage the game. And I think that really speaks to the, the versatility of this, and not just because obviously you know you're moving from place to place, uh, you're, you're traversing this quite extensive map to to get to one point to the other. There's a lot of backtracking, which I'll get onto in just a moment. But just to sort of complement that combat and to really mix things up just slightly is something called the monster card system which is new to seven sirens 
So the monster card system basically enables you to, as you've just seen, I've acquired a, a bat monster card right there. What happens there, when you get those cards, you add them to your inventory, you assign them, you equip them, and they actually affect different attributes for Shante. So it could be, you know, you can climb vines faster, you can crawl faster, uh, you can your damage dealt when you, you attack with enemies, your hair is much stronger, um, you know, so there are different attributes, but you can only have three equipped at any one time. Um, so that, that, I guess that's one of the main things to, to, to bear in mind with this is that you can actually mix up and you know determine Shante's build over a period of time. You don't have dependent on your play style or dependent on how you want to start playing the game. It really is all up to you. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, there is a lot of familiar terrain, uh, you know, and you will do a lot of backtracking in this, which sometimes can be to the game's detriment, I felt. Um, sometimes I wasn't really sure where I was supposed to be going, what I was supposed to be doing. The objective isn't always clear. To give you kind of an example of that, um, I, I actually, at one point in the game, you actually have to look at an item in your inventory to actually tell you where to go um, because it's, it's, it's kind of kept as a mystery. And it works and it doesn't work in some ways. So it obviously adds to the element of the, old school 90s metroid vein metroid games of old you know where you basically you, you weren't always your hand wasn't always held you kind of had to figure things out for yourself a lot you had to determine whether or not the area you were in required you to have a new ability to reach that place or whether or not you think you're just not quite you know you're not quite timing your your jump correctly or you're not shooting in the right place um, so there's a lot of that in Shantae and I think there's always has been in these games but especially in Seven Sirens I've really noticed it uh, but as mentioned here there is a lot of backtracking you know that the map you go from one side left to right there's a town in the center there's also a few hidden towns scattered throughout but you're ultimately looking for dungeons which you can visit and in those dungeons you take on a boss uh, you have to rescue one of the hidden ge uh, the half genies basically to, to kind of explain the story uh, Shantae is actually supposed to be on vacation <laughs> that doesn't really quite work out as you'd anticipate but Shanti and her crew are on vacation uh, and um, you know they're, they're actually getting involved in like a half genie festival as a celebration uh, but during that celebration the half genies mysteriously disappear just about they got to, just they're about to go onto stage and that's basically when the story kind of takes upon itself because Shanti even though she's not the guardian of this island takes it upon itself of course to uh, you know to look for the um look for the other half genies so what you're seeing on the screen now, I've actually acquired the nuked ability. So I'm going to give you an example of what these abilities look like. So you can see here I'm scaling the walls, uh, but it also helps you to dash around and make things a bit quicker. So as you can see now, I can reach places I, I previously couldn't uh, reach. So it, it's really, it's, it's a clever ability and I think it should it, it, you gradually get added these abilities gradually get added for over the course of the game so you know you're not just uh you know you, you'll see areas you can't get past at some at many many points in the game so you have to as, as mentioned determine whether or not you need to come back at a later point with ability or whether or not you actually need to um you know whether or not you you, you actually just timing it correctly but as you can see now because in this area previously as i showed in the video i couldn't get to the top uh, now that I can, I can scale the wall and I can collect this, this heart squid. Now, the, the important thing with these heart squids I just briefly mentioned is they're basically, if, um, if you collect four of them, uh, there are three per each dungeon, as you can see on the top right there. Um, if you collect four of them, what happens is you visit a vendor in the town and that vendor will squish those together to create an additional uh, extra health heart for you. So you can actually gain, you know, additional health and you can, over a period of time, like a bit like a Zelda game, basically, uh, you can keep uh, building up your life force. So those are really quite important to get, but again, they're completely optional, um, as you can see. There's also regular save points with this this guy in the green cloak here, so um, you'll see those plenty throughout the course of the game. Uh, and there is no water save in Shanty, so you will have to rely on your own kind of saving um, to to make sure that you know the, the game is um, you know to make sure you're up to date with the game. Um, but yeah, you can see already the differences the new ability is having on my um, ability to um, traverse this dungeon. So previously, you know, there were a lot of things I couldn't do and I wouldn't probably wouldn't be able to make that before. So now I can. Uh, and yeah, it just and that's just the new ability, right? So as I mentioned, there's obviously an ability where you can go underwater. There's an ability where you can actually drill down through uh, through the sand. So it's really all quite clever and adds together. And I think it's something you really notice about Shanty as well is the game really is visually quite striking. Uh, I mean, you, you have to bear in mind, originally disappeared on Apple Arcade. I mean, the visuals uh, been, are now on like full grown TVs and they work great. I mean, it looks, Shanty games as always look fantastic. And I think this one is just another example of just how good you know, it, it, it looks and how, how much effort has gone into the art style for this to create, make all the characters look distinct and make the environments look refreshing and different. 
And uh, I'll show you a bit in a bit though, but there are some really tough boss battles in this as well. So uh, you'll see that in just a moment, what I mean by that. But so uh, you'll show you the first boss. But yeah, the Shanty as, as ever is full of uh, bosses. I'm struggling to get this one. <laughs> I can get it, I just... Uh... There you go. <laughs> took a second <laughs> but yeah the formula is like it's a nice welcome treat for gamers you know i think it's it's a great side scrolling platformer uh, i think that, that that's one of the beautiful things about this is that you know it really does feel like a 90s era platformer uh, and it and it works and plays just exactly in that way um so if you if you grew up on those platformers this will you'll feel right at home with this as well and way forward are very very good at uh, you know toning into our nostalgia while also creating something that's you know relevant and uh, and current as well because uh, it has the right amount of difficulty but it's still very fair as well i think so that, that counts for a lot so what you're going to see now you are going to see the first boss battle in this game uh it's a bit tricky uh but also it's it's also very manageable and achievable as well so um you know we're not going to uh you won't be feeling too taxed with it so yeah as you can see here you've basically got um uh, the, the enemy there is unsprouting uh, and so she's kind of like a, a water lily siren so um, you know, you've know got different sirens to fight in here so the clue that was there uh, in the description there sunbathing seaweed so you notice there I'm scaling the walls and I'm moving her between positions but while she's also sprouting out these vines in the, in, in the ground and also enemies to, to come and fight you so what you need to do as you can see I've moved her straight into the sunlight and all of a sudden she is exhausted and these water lilies appear so now I have the opportunity to jump up and strike her so um, you know there's, there's, there's some creativity there the other boss battles are, are slightly different as well but I think this gives you a real nice idea of you know the versatility that the shanty games offer and also the, the different types of bosses you are going to encounter through this as well they also do take a fair few hits so this is not going to be a Sonic the Hedgehog three hits and you're down uh, kind of boss battle the, these are going to take some beating so uh, you're going to have to be ready for the long haul um, but yeah, I mean, you mentioned the backtracking in Shante. I mean, it, it, there were a few times it was it was quite frustrating. It was, I felt a bit aimless. You know, I, I did feel like I kept just going to the same place again and again and again and again, which got a little bit annoying. Um, and again, because when it doesn't always hold your hand and you feel a bit directionless, you do sometimes feel like it, it, you you get very lost in this, and it might some people's attention might you know not be up to it. So that is one of the main problems I did find with the game a little bit as well. Um, but um, but also, it's also an enjoyable way to play it as well. So as I say, it, it very much feels authentic to, um, to to those of you platformers. You just saw them, by the way, as well. So over the course of the game, you'll be collecting lots of food, different types of food, like ice cream and salmon and you know sushi and things like that. So you actually, you, at times, you, you have to watch your health and eat it yourself so you can pause the action and, and, and grab it from your inventory. It's well worth doing because it, there are going to be plenty of times where you're going to struggle and uh, these bosses especially will really take you out. Uh, you can see there it's really based in my health so I'm having to be very very careful um, but yeah so uh, yeah it's uh, you, you've seen there the I'm having to eat again because it's uh, yeah, definitely been a challenge but there she's yawning again now so now I've got my opportunity to strike but you're getting the idea of this night so this is essentially this these boss battles will feel very familiar to you um, you know to once you once you go the course of the game uh, the, uh, this is the only boss battle that we'll be showing the video is almost over now so uh, I just kind of wanted to give you a real feel for you know what bosses look like what the abilities look like what the core game mechanics look like and also the animation style because it is incredibly striking and as I said it's it's really a precursor I think to what way forward want to achieve with the Shanty series and I think there's some big things in this franchise's future I mean you know it's already had a fantastic platform in the Pirates Curse is probably one of the greatest platformers of this modern generation it's uh, it's a real treat if you haven't played it um, you know th th this isn't really up to those highs I don't think but certainly I think when you 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 you, you feel like you're not going to be disappointed playing this right I think that's that's the beauty of the Shanty games you always feel like you're um, it's always going to be a good time and you and they're always well polished they're always uh, you know designed very very well there's always some unique things to find and, you know there's a, there's a fun little dancing mini game in here where you've got to win as many points as possible and as I said the monster cards really help you diversify and mix up your strategies so that's that's it for this boss here um, and uh, I've rescued the uh, one of the half genies and uh, yeah 
but that's going to do it for this video um, I hope you've enjoyed looking at Shantae and the Seven Sirens on Switch uh, I really enjoy playing this it's so much fun I'd highly recommend checking it out if you're looking for a good new platform but I um, but, uh, hope you enjoyed this video be sure to check around check on the rest of it on the content on the, on the channel and uh, see you for the next one